Hi, I'm Dr. Swachla, Scientific Director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Hydrosalpinx is a medical condition in which one or both fallopian tubes become blocked and filled with watery or serous fluid. The term hydro means water and salpinx refers to fallopian tube. This condition can have a significant impact on a woman's fertility and can complicate the success of IVF success rate. Let's look at the effect of hydrosalpinx on IVF. Before that, I'd like to discuss about the causes of hydrosalpinx. Hydrosalpinx is often caused by a prior infection, most commonly a sexually transmitted infection like chlamydia or gonorrhea. The infection can lead to scarring and damage to the fallopian tubes resulting in blockages. Other potential causes including endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory disease or prior abdominal or pelvic surgery also can lead to hydrosalpinx. So what is the impact on fertility? Hydrosalpinx can affect fertility in many ways. The presence of fluid in the fallopian tubes can obstruct the passage of eggs from the ovaries to uterus preventing natural conception leading to due to blockage of the fallopian tubes. Toxic environment. The fluid within the blocked tubes can create a toxic environment which is detrimental to embryo development. It can impair the embryo's ability to implant in the uterus uh, even if it is successfully fertilized. There is an increased risk of ectopic pregnancy. Hydrosalpinx increases the risk of ectopic pregnancy where the embryo implants outside the uterus typically within the fallopian tube. Ectopic pregnancies are not viable and they can also be life-threatening. Let's look at the impact of IVF on hydrosalpinx. IVF is a fertility treatment that bypasses the need for fallopian tubes. Instead of relying on the natural transport of eggs and sperm through fallopian tubes, IVF involves ovulation stimulation where the ovaries are stimulated to produce multiple eggs. There is an egg retrieval procedure where mature eggs are retrieved from the ovaries. Then there is a procedure of fertilization where the eggs are fertilized with the sperm in the laboratory to create embryos. And then there is embryo transfer where one or more embryos are transferred back into the uterus. IVF is suitable option for women with hydrosalpinx because it bypasses the block tubes allowing for creation of embryos outside the tubes. However, there are some important considerations that we should talk about. Fluid drainage. In some cases prior to IVF, the fluid within the blocked fallopian tubes may be drained through a procedure called tubal occlusion or salpingectomy. This is often recommended to improve IVF success rates by reducing the toxic effects of fluids on embryo implantation. Increased success rate. Removal or drainage of the hydrosalpinx before IVF has been shown to improve IVF success rates. Women with untreated hydrosalpinx have lower IVF success rates due to the adverse effects of the fluids on embryo development and implantation. Embryo transfer timing. To minimize the impact of any residual toxic fluid, embryo transfer is typically performed a few weeks after the drainage or removal of the hydrosalpinx. It's important for patients with hydrosalpinx who are considering IVF to consult with a fertility specialist. The specialist can evaluate the specific circumstances, recommend appropriate treatments or interventions to develop a plan for you to optimize your chances of a successful pregnancy. If you wish to understand more, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. A lot of effort has gone into making this video. Please like and subscribe us. Thank you.